Welcome to an example on how to use the variation of parameters method to solve a linear second order non-homogeneous differential equation. So we'll be solving a differential equation in this form here where g of x is not zero. And the general solution will be equal to y of x equals y sub c, the complementary function, plus big y sub p, a particular solution, which can also be written in this form here where y sub one and y sub two form a fundamental set of solutions to the corresponding homogeneous differential equation. So our first step will be to solve the corresponding homogeneous differential equation, which will give us y sub c, and then we'll find big y sub p using the variation of parameters formula given here. And then we can form the general solution using y sub c and big y sub p. So let's take a look at our example. We want to solve the given differential equation and state an interval for the solution. So the first thing we should notice is that we do have a linear second order non-homogeneous differential equation. So for step one, we will solve the corresponding homogeneous differential equation, which would be y double prime plus y equals zero. And because we have constant coefficients, we can solve this using a characteristic equation where a would be equal to one, b, the coefficient of y prime would be zero, and c would be one. And therefore, the characteristic equation would be r squared plus one equals zero. To solve this for r, let's subtract one on both sides. That would be r squared equals negative one. And now we'll take the square root of both sides of the equation. The square root of negative one is equal to i, so we have r equals plus or minus i. So we have a complex solution to the characteristic equation, which tells us that y sub c, or the general solution to the corresponding homogeneous differential equation, will be in this form here, where the complex solution would be alpha plus or minus beta i. So for alpha plus or minus beta i, since our solutions are plus or minus i or plus or minus one i, this tells us that alpha would be zero and beta is equal to one. Which means y sub c, the complementary function, or the general solution to the corresponding homogeneous differential equation, would be c sub one, this would be e to the zero, which is one cosine x, plus c sub two, again e to the zero is one, we'd have sine x. So now that we have the complementary function, or y sub c, we'll now find big y sub p, and then form the general solution. Let's go ahead and do this on the next slide. Let's begin by determining the Ronskian of y sub one and y sub two. Notice that y sub one would be cosine x, and y sub two would be equal to sine x. So the Ronskian of y sub one comma y sub two is going to be a two by two determinant where the first row will be y sub one and y sub two. So we have cosine x, sine x. And the second row will be the first derivative. So we'll have negative sine x and cosine x. Now the determinant is going to be equal to this product minus this product. And this is going to work out very nicely. We have cosine squared x and then minus negative sine squared x, which becomes plus sine squared x, which is equal to positive one. So now that we have the run scheme, let's go ahead and set up our formula for big Y sub p. Big Y sub p is going to be equal to negative y sub one, or negative cosine x, times the integral. Remember the Ronskian is equal to one, so we'll just have y sub two times g of x. y sub two is sine x, and g of x is going to be equal to secant x. And then we'll have plus y sub two, which is sine x, times the integral of, again our denominator is one, so we have y sub one times g of x, or cosine x, times secant x dx. 
Let's go ahead and simplify the integrands, and then we'll integrate. So we have big Y sub P is equal to negative cosine X. Secant X is equal to one over cosine X. So let's write this as sine X divided by cosine X. And these are reciprocal functions, so this is just equal to one DX. So now let's go ahead and take this on the next slide and integrate. Notice to integrate here, we'll have to perform U substitution. If we let U equal the denominator cosine X, then differential U is going to be equal to negative sine X DX. So the integral would be negative one over U DU. In fact, the negative out, we're going to have positive cosine X. The integral of one over U would be natural log U. So in this case, we have natural log absolute value of cosine X. And then we'll have plus integral of one is just going to be X, so we have plus X sine X. And this is a particular solution to the non-homogeneous differential equation. So now we can use big Y sub P. And from the previous slide, Y sub C, the complementary function, to form the general solution. So again, little y sub c was equal to c sub one cosine x plus c sub two sine x, which means the general solution, which we'll call y of x, is equal to y sub c plus big y sub p, or c sub one cosine x plus c sub two sine x plus cosine x times natural log absolute value cosine x plus x sine x. But notice we're also asked to state an interval for the solution, and that's because looking at the natural log function, the argument of cosine x cannot equal zero because natural log zero does not exist. And because we're taking the natural log of the absolute value of cosine x, let's use the open interval for x from negative pi over two to pi over two. Notice negative pi over two and positive pi over two are not in this interval because this is where cosine x would be zero. And that'll do it for this example. I hope you found this helpful.